How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video and the VIP demo leaves us today if it hasn't already by the time this video is released riddled with more issues than one can comprehend. From not being able to log in, friend codes not being given out, 95% loading bug persisting all the way through to the very end and if that wasn't enough there was rubber banding, messy matchmaking and the UI was something special at times as you struggle to invite friends. That said however it was not all doom and gloom and after I managed to get into the game after 5 hours of constant persistence of trying, for free play at the very least, I knew what I was playing here was going to be something special. Let me rephrase that, it was something special. I like many others was not invited to the Game Changers program, so for me, like many of you here, this was my first playtest. Bioware and EA have been hard at it to get things better and as compensation have offered this final you're seeing on screen now to all those who participated or tried to during the VIP demo, so that's something at the very least. So with those mishaps out the way, let's get to the crux of the video and my impression of how I thought Anthem was delivered. When you first start playing Anthem, you land in Fort Tarsus, your solo instance hub where everything story related takes place in the form of progress. The beautiful visuals take your breath away. So many NPCs make the hub alive. There were so many to actually interact with. Even if many were not available in the demo, it gave you a sense of community and the side stories with different NPCs continue to impress. Especially the one with Amal, that guy needs help. The demo gave you the option of free story missions, a stronghold and free play. Free play is exactly what you would expect, free roaming, but unlike other games of similar genre here in Anthem, it's actually worth playing free play. Sure, it has the lowest chance of dropping masterworks and legendary gear, but it is still relevant. Anthem has taken the approach of horizontal progression, which for many a year has been missing from games. Horizontal progression as opposed to vertical progression is a breath of fresh air and feels great to be a thing again. Now regardless of what you do, be it material gathering or quick dungeon, you're always rewarded with something. Even if it is just crafting materials, and crafting couldn't be any easier. As long as you have had the rarity drop for you, it seems you unlock that tier to create for that slot. These as you imagine get more expensive as you go up the tiers, but are still a good way to complete that last piece or have something to half complete that build till you get the one you're truly after. Where Anthem shines is its ability to fly. The most daunting thing you would think would be flying, but it feels so natural and fluent and after 30 seconds of flying, you'll find yourself zipping through the open world that Bioware created. I was even trying to do loop the loops, but that was not possible sadly, but the fact that it felt so free gave me the impression that this was the case and possible. All four classes fly at the same speed and it feels like you have been doing it forever. I let my 4 year old son try it cause well like most boys he loves Iron Man, Spider Man and was stuck there glued watching me zipping through the air. I showed him the controls and boom 45 seconds in no joke he was zipping around and the smile on his face while zipping around using the beam was absolutely priceless. It just goes to show that the controls are so intuitive that a 4 year old could sit there and enjoy the game with ease. The four javelins all play remarkably different. After playing Ranger to level 12, I unlocked Colossus and when I started playing it, it was clunky, slow and not evasive like the Ranger. It played so different, I really didn't like it. But I played a few missions and now I love the Colossus even more than I thought I was going to love it. Getting a couple rare components as well with over 1k health and 900 shield changed the whole dynamic. I couldn't put it down. The story is fun. Engaging from the bits we got. It has humour, quirkiness and the characters are relatable. Your character having a voice makes so much of a difference. Its portrayal is really amazing and I can't wait to find out more about these characters, Sev and such that you hear in the mission's communications. The more I played the demo, the more I wanted to learn about the world and the people of Anthem. I haven't felt this happy, this excited about a game in such a long time. The lore in Destiny is by far one of the best ever, but the fact that they expect you to go through RNG just to unlock and learn about it, and even after that, the strictest of strict RNGs make you not even want to care about it. Here in Anthem, it's the complete opposite. They want you to get invested in the world of Anthem. They want you to care about the world of Anthem. They want you to become invested and learn more and more as you play. I mean, you kill an enemy, you earn the right to know about them. I found out more in these two days than I have in forever in similar games. 
The free play is a four player instance, you can go in solo or as a matched four. Regardless of how you enter the free play, you enter as a group of four. While playing free play, you have mini dungeons littered all around. If you play Destiny, think of them as lost sectors with the exception that the loot is actually worthwhile getting. The mini dungeons are fun to do and at the end, when you get the loot, it's exciting. You're always looking forward to the end rewards as you don't know what you will get till you end the expedition and see the finish screen. I've not been this excited for loot in a long time. The world events are fun to do and rewarding. That's the biggest thing. Everything you do from open world to missions to even completing challenges, also known as triumphs in Destiny, are rewarding. You complete a challenge, you get a reward. You complete a set of challenges, you get even more rewards. Everything you do rewards you. You feel your time played is respected and appreciated, not like the triumphs or seals that tie almost everything to RNG with no reward at the end. The missions are engaging, so much dialogue back and forth keeps you interested, invested and focused. They are fun to do and from the three missions I played, I want more. So I hope the story can continue to impress. The stronghold even on normal difficulty up the difficulty a bit. It felt end game and the challenge was there, it was nice and refreshing and the boss at the end was really well done, it didn't feel like a sponge, it didn't just feel like it was tanky for the sake of being tanky. It had a lot of health, it was a boss. And if you played right, and if you played well, and if you comboed and synergized, you took a lot of damage off that boss. So if you play right, things go down quickly. If you just shoot it and shoot it and shoot it and shoot it, it's going to take a while. But at least if you play the game the way it's supposed to be played, things die a lot quicker. I have to commend Bioware. They did a great job with the world. Dungeons, missions and strongholds and no matter what you're playing, it's bound to leave a smile on your face, even if it's a world event and you're fighting an Ursix. I was playing with a friend just yesterday, we were flying around, he was on his storm, I was on my colossus. We saw an ursix, he dropped his ultimate on the ursix and set off a prime. I pulled off my ultimate as a colossus, boom, detonated it. It took enormous amounts of health, it was just great. That one scene there cemented what makes this game so great. When Mike and Ben continually said this game is better played together, they weren't joking. It really is better played together because of moments like this. But it's moments like this that are great, that are possible in the world of Anthem. Customization in the Forge is awesome. You can spend hours of your life just in there customizing a javelin to your heart's desire. It's so in depth and the fact that every javelin now looks different gives the game a new lease. Glamour in this day and age is end game and it's amazing to see a game like this pushing glamour so hard. I love it and can't wait to get even more creative on the 22nd. So up to now we talked about the good, but what about the bad? After all, Anthem is far from perfect. I would mention the ability to not see your teammates, but I know that's already in the retail release. The lack of a proper map and reliance on a compass up top is fine, however, if your friend strays too far, especially in the free roam, you lose sight of them, and this loss of sight makes it a pain to get reacquainted. Yes, you can open the map, but I feel you shouldn't need to do that. You should at least have them on a marker at all times so you can see where they are, and this is not the case. If they stray too far, you also lose sight of them on your compass. The world feels a little empty, and airborne enemies were few and far between, but when you encountered a wyvern, air battles were great as you flew up and hovered in midair to take them all out. Loading screens between dungeons I felt were unnecessary. Longer corridors, something Destiny does for loading, would have been a lot better. I felt it detracts from the experience. Ammo at times in missions felt a bit low, and I found myself running out a lot, but that could also be accrued to other factors. In missions, I never really noticed the tethering, and if it was there, it was generous enough to be of zero hindrance. I also felt the world free play map should have allowed up to 8 players at least. 12 would have been the sweet spot. 4 players just makes it look so barren, and I think this can be extended and improved on come release or post launch at the very least. I doubt it can make it in there for release, but 4 players in that big open world, especially in free play, just make the world feel so barren. Enemies in the world were few and far between. Yeah, you had a few hotspots where enemies would appear, you had vortexes appearing and the world events appearing, but there was so much emptiness that was around that I felt could have been a bit more populated. I'd say around at least a 20% more populated environment would have been better, but these are minor gripes when you think about everything that Anthem is doing and everything it gets right. But honestly, outside of the few grabs I had, the game was a gem. 
I loved every moment. The loot grind was great. I never felt cheated or played unfairly. The lore was there given to you to read and find out about. The codex acted as a fantastic source of information and you never felt like you didn't understand what and why you was doing something after you had done it. Something I've experienced many a time in other similar games. I have high hopes for Anthem and it's why I have no regrets pre-ordering. Mike Gamble, Ben Irving, Jonathan Warner and Mike Dara and the team at Bioware have done a fantastic job with Anthem. So good that I can see this easily being my go-to game for the future. All they need to do now is maintain the content coming through and they will be golden. Very positive first impression of Anthem and can't wait to play more. Let me know in the comment section below if you did manage to get into the demo what your thoughts were, what your impressions were, how you found the demo, what classes did you play, how different was it from the Ranger, did you enjoy Anthem, did you not enjoy Anthem, what did you like, what didn't you like, what could be improved, let me know in the comment section below, I'd be interested to hear other thoughts and how the demo actually changed your perception if it did in actually playing Anthem. I'm aware that people are going to be upset about the login issues and the 95% bug and many other issues that propped up, I appreciate this. But don't let that cloud your judgement because hopefully by the time the demo comes out on February 1st most of these will be ironed out but you can rest assured they will not release the game on February 22nd with those issues intact. So don't judge the game based on that. Well everyone, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, enjoyable, entertaining, informative, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow for you. It really helps the channel get noticed. If you really, really, really liked this impressions video, don't forget to share. After all, the more you share, the more it gets noticed. With that said, thanks for being here, and until next time, remain legend. <laughs>